Welcome to a little segment I like to call Bumps and Bends. Hey guys, welcome to Laguna Seca. We're in the USF 2000. This is the first of my track guides uh, that are done weekly for the Formula Sprint uh, for the new car. And first week we're at Laguna Seca. This is a great track, something we all know. So it's a very good way to start the category. Um, but I'm finding that this car has its own driving style and the more you drive it, the faster you go. Now, as far as a reference, my best time is a 24.782, which is not bad, but the aliens are doing 23s. Um, Kane Halliburton won the first ever top split race in this category so congratulations to him and i've been watching races which have had uh chris oliver sorry chris lellum and he's uh super fast and super consistent but i'll show you my perspective of the track um brake bias is all the way down to a 51.8 percent um been experimenting today just bringing it further back and back and back and watching my deltas go down but biggest thing I've found to get me time is to watch the fast guys, to watch how they're braking, um, the way they're taking apexes and everything like that. So without any further ado, let's jump in the car and watch a lap of Laguna Seca. We'll do a full lap at real time and then we'll go corner by corner. Coming right over the hill. Really focusing on that first apex, and then my next focus is exit. Exit at full throttle is what we want, using as much curb as we can. Use it all. Using what I call a pro master line, something that Thomas jo Jordan told me. It is a sweeper, more than a corner. Breaking between the line and the two, cut it right and use as much curb on the inside. Maximise the exit. Coming up to the left sweeper here. Try not to brake. Maintain as much momentum without getting sideways. Coming up to the infamous corkscrew. Really find that brake balance. Try not to get on the throttle too early. But the smoother you are, the faster you are around here. Really cut this left sweeper. Nice calm approach to the second last corner and this last corner can you can make up a lot of time just by having front end grip. So that is a lap of Laguna Seca. We'll have a look from outside the car and I'll show you where my braking points are how I'm attacking the corners and hopefully you can benefit um, in the same way that I've benefited from watching the fast guys. So we'll do it all in slow-mo. So I'm really trying to minimize the length of the track here, just cut it right in, but then start veering out to the right. And I'm using, get this off, this line is my braking marker. It's a reference point as opposed to a braking marker. Uh, the braking marker itself is judged by how confident you are with the brake balance. And if you go too far, you're just gonna end up wide um, and lose a lot of rear grip. So try to keep the car stable and focus on exit. And this is probably the most important corner of the track, even though it's the first one, but it really sets up a flow for the rest of the track. So I'm not even using full braking anymore, having the brake bias all the way to the rear. Just nice and smooth on the downshifts. Try and cut it in. You could probably use more corner there, but my focus is on the second corner and really cutting it in and trying to straight line the exit at as much full throttle as I can. You're going to get a tiny bit of wheel spin, but the smoother you are on the throttle minimizes that wheel spin a lot. 
and then just start focusing on, I guess, what we call turn three. Now, I'm really just trying to chase the ripple strip. I could have taken a different line here, but I just want to get the car out wide and cut in as early as possible. It's almost a blind corner here, but you want to get the car right into that ripple strip. Once again, I've gone wide. And when you watch your own replays back, you can see where you're losing time. So if you go too far, if you get on the throttle too early here, you're going to go wide. And as far as braking goes, I'm just tapping the brake. Um, more of a routine thing. I'm sure with more practice, I wouldn't be braking at all. So it's just a little tap of the brakes, bring it in, focus on that front end grip and early throttle out. So the earlier you get on the throttle, the wider you're going to be, and you'll see a point where it's too wide. You can use a, a lot of this curb, but just make sure if you're going to use a lot of the curb, slowly bring it back to this point. If you get onto the dirt here, it will um, make the car slightly unstable and you could lose a little bit of momentum too from the dirt. But you want to stay left. I learned this trick from Thomas Jordan a very long time ago with his track guide, the Pro Mazda line. So you're getting out really wide and you're cutting in and you're using a lot more curb than what you think you can. This is actually quite a smooth curve before the, the sausage on the inside. Cut it right in. And it's all about getting onto the throttle as early as possible. Too early, you're gonna end up wide. This is a very understeery setup or understeery car in itself. But once you know you've got that grip here, so I'm not even touching the brake there. It's more the turning point. So find that perfect turning point for the, the sausage rather than the ripple strip. And it'll actually bring the car over, right over. Uh, we'll go to the cockpit. So it actually looks like I'm actually chasing the track, but I'm at that perfect point. So getting the center of the car just on that line there will really get you out. A tad bumpy, so it's gonna send you wide a bit. You can see as I'm opening up the throttle, sorry, the steering, I'm already on full throttle and maximizing my momentum. Now once I've stabilized the car, I wanna cut and straight line right over here. Uses the smallest amount of circuit as possible. And then we're coming up to the uphill section. Now, as far as reference points, I want to break ideally between the line here and number two. But essentially, it's about stabilizing that car in that millisecond before you turn in. The more stable you are, the more you can attack the inside of this curb, which you can actually eat a lot of that curb. I'm on the brake at the line. Trying to stabilize the car, down two gears into third, and then just slowly bring it in. But I'm, at this point, really looking at eating that curb. The more curb you eat here, the better you can get on the throttle, and your focus is on exit, and you, the earlier you can get on the throttle, once again, the wider it will go with its understeer, and if you get the timing right, you will not lift on exit. So really getting off there. You find if you go wide, I might do a tiny lift to bring it back in. But if you've gone wide, you'll know about it because your delta will go red very quickly. So coming up to the infamous left sweeper. This is all about uh, turning in. If you turn in late, you will understeer onto the dirt. Watching Chris Lullum, he turns in quite early. You can see I'm just tap the brakes a little bit. I don't want to touch the brakes. If I can get the timing of the turn in right, I won't need the brakes at all. But the more practice you do, the, um, the more you're going to find that perfect point. You basically want to turn it in without touching this blind sausage curb and get on that throttle as early as possible. I'm actually trying to turn in at the number two marker where in the past, 
I've probably turned in at the one, sorry, at the line between one and two, but this car being understeery really helps stabilize the car by turning in early. And you're aiming for the sausage curve or just to the left of it. And if you hit too much of it, you're gonna go off. So from a cockpit view, like I'm really trying to eat that curb, but I've I've just missed it. And you can see the tire there, I've just missed it. And that's just about getting on the throttle as early as you can and maximizing the uphill section. If you take this corner too aggressively, there's gonna be a, a what would you call, a, you're still sliding on exit. The more you're sliding on exit, the less momentum you've got. So the earlier you can get onto the grip after the apex, the more you're gonna benefit from that uphill section. So once I've found my, see I've actually lifted there, I don't wanna lift, I wanna get right on that throttle. Your delta will tell you how grippy your car is because if you start sliding, you're gonna lose a lot of momentum and a less powerful car with an uphill section will really hurt your time. But once I've found that grippy point, I'm cutting right over to the left. And what I wanna do basically here is to straight line the corner. So I wanna get my left tire here and I'm aiming still for the right side of the track, but because the, the uphill section is like an S, I'm just minimizing my steering inputs basically. They left here, but I'm setting myself up for the corkscrew already. I'm braking a little bit early here. I think it's because of my brake bias. I don't want to unsettle the car, but I've braked way before I can see the corkscrew, but found, what gear am I in there? Fifth. You can either stretch out fourth and sit on the limiter here, or fifth will give you a bit more momentum, but you're gonna go into the corkscrew a lot hotter. So once again, more practice, more confidence through the corkscrew and find that tipping point at the start of the corkscrew and that will set you up for the exit. So really going out wide here. I'm just slowly on the brakes, trying to get my downshifts nice and calm. The quicker you do your downshifts, the more it'll unsettle the car. So now at the center of the track, looking for this point here. As far as bumps go, there's a massive one. If we have a look here, you can see this, the uh, ripple strip actually comes in a little bit, which will scoop the car a, a tad. But if you use too much curb, which is very easy to do on a blind corner, the ground actually comes all the way down and all the way up. That'll bottom the car out and your tires will lift off the ground. And we don't want that. <laughs> So it's all about track knowledge. Just remember the corners don't move. So you want to aim for these people here. Um, you don't want to go out that way and this way. You want to try and straight line this. Now as you're going over the crest here, your wheels are going to spin. So really manage your throttle and trying to get into this section of the corkscrew as smooth as possible. You'll find with the wheel spin, you can use a little bit and once it grips up, there's no need to go all the way out here because the following corner, you need to be on this side of the track. So that just means you're moving over to the right side of the track a lot less, just minimizing the track distance. If you went all the way out there and all the way back, you're actually lengthening the circuit. What a great track this is. Right, so we're going out wide. The wider you go, the more you're gonna set up the following corner. Um, but the hard part is you're already looking at this corner. So the wider you go, it's actually blind. Even though it's next to you, 
you're not looking right at all. And um, the more confident you get, the wider you can go. It is a jagged ripple strip, but you can go a lot wider than what I have. And coming down, just trying to, I've actually short shifted into fourth. And finding that perfect point that I can get on full throttle without understeering on exit too much that I hit the dirt. So try and get that tire right in. Can you see this little sausage curb isn't that big? If you go over it, of course, you'll unsettle the car, but you can eat a lot more corner, get on the throttle a lot earlier. Downhill section here, we can get gain a lot of momentum, therefore time. You can go out wide, but your following corner, you need to be on the other side of the track. So once again, shortening the circuit. Now this one, this one's for the big boys. The second last corner. You can use a lot more circuit than what I have, but it's all about trying to get into fourth as fast as possible, trying to maintain front grip for as long as possible and eating all of that apex before the sausage curb. It really, it's like a bowl corner. It used to be a third gear corner in Gran Turismo 2, but as time goes on, every car is different. So really eating this part of the ripple strip without touching the sausage curb. I used to use this tire along this line, and you can see that's, that's a third of a car width. So the further you go in, the more speed you can carry without understeering onto the sand. There's no grass here, so if you're going to go off, the sand will slow you down. And what I have found is if, you've, if you're losing front grip and you find that front grip balance right at the apex heading towards the exit, you can actually short shift into, sorry, you can actually downshift into third to just punch the car. The higher rev range in this car is quite potent. The lower rev range, there's no power at all. Really punching it out. And then you're setting up the final corner. This is great fun when you're three cars in. You're going to have people dive bomb. Um, but the ideal line is right out here and breaking between the line here and the two. I'm going down to second, trying to maintain maximum speed. Um, but I noticed some of the fast guys are in first, either just before the apex or just after, and a real punch out of the corner. I can use a little bit more curb there. The more you use, the earlier you can get on the throttle. But just remember, if you go over the sausage curb and you get on the throttle too early, the rear will just spin because you're lifting the tires off the ground. And you can see it's just slightly bumpy on exit. And you can use quite a bit of this track uh, on exit, but don't use too much because you'll get a 1x and you'll avoid your lap. So just try and straight line. And then it's the home straight. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone who subscribed lately. Very much appreciate it. It's good fun watching uh, new people come to the channel. And um, if you haven't yet, maybe click on that subscribe button down below. And yeah, come join me at the, uh, the links in the description. Um, give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Down if you didn't. I'll see you on track soon. Bye.